killing a great-grandmother on a crossing at Luton Airport has been cleared of causing death by dangerous driving. Rosano Casagrande from Peterborough was delivering milk in May last year when his truck hit Mary Whiting, who was 78 and from Norwich. The jury had heard from expert witnesses that it had been a tragic accident. The crossing has now been modified. There's been outrage and anger in Cambridge after the head of a pig was dumped outside of a mosque. Worshippers at the Shah Jalal Community House say they've never had trouble like this before. Muslim leaders and the local MP have condemned the act. Bhavani Vadi reports. From the outside, it appears to be a modest house, but it's actually a place of worship for Muslims in North Cambridge. Earlier this week, though, this mosque was desecrated. Worshippers found the severed head of a pig on this step as they were leaving prayers around 9 o'clock on Monday evening. The animal is considered unclean by many Muslims, and that's why the police are treating this as a hate crime. Those who attend the Shah Jalal community house have been upset by what they think is an insulting act. It's never happened it's like that. It's the first time. We are really shocked. It's very bad, very bad. Because everybody, because that, that thing is very bad for us. Residents say this kind of abuse is rare. It's not usually a lot of conflict. Uh, I've seen it to be quite a tolerant city. Well, as far as I've seen, it's okay. Nothing bad has happened. Community leaders have also condemned the attack. I'm saddened more than angry, uh, quite simply because in Cambridge we do not suffer from things like this. Um, and what we need to bear in mind is maybe the context of it. And the context is this is one person, probably a bigot, in a population of half a million. The, the behaviour of the people who did this is, is disgraceful. Um, and I think we all must come together to condemn this abhorrent act. There is absolutely no call for it whatsoever. The pig head was taken away for forensic examination as part of the police investigation. And now worshippers are trying to return to normal. Bhavani Badi, Anglia News, Cambridge. Well, it's coming up to 13 minutes past. An inquest has heard how a man was killed and dumped in the river by two men. He'd been blackmailing about the abuse of young boys. Derek Tempest's body was found six months after he went missing in Yarmouth. The two men he was extorting money from had already killed themselves. Natalie Gray was in court. Derek Tempest died because he was a blackmailer. The father of three from Yarmouth got garage owners James Hall and Andy Ventham to pay him £1,800 to keep quiet about abusing young boys, including himself as a child. He was going back to the garage they ran in Yarmouth to collect more hush money when it's thought they killed him there. The garage owner, James Hall, was overheard saying, we'll give him a gypsy's warning. If we get any more trouble like this, then he's going in the river. In April, six months after he disappeared, Derek Tempest's body was pulled from the River Yare. His body had been weighed down with a 15-kilogram brake drum from a large vehicle. But his killers were already dead. They were found in a car in their garage last November after inhaling exhaust fumes. A note said simply, sorry about this, but events have conspired against us. Derek Tempest's partner, Sarah Sherfield, said he told her the two men had interfered with him when he was 13. Later, the court heard how he decided to blackmail them after he saw them acting inappropriately with two teenage boys. The coroner, William Armstrong, recorded a verdict of unlawful killing on Mr Tempest and suicide on the two other men. Police said afterwards they would have been prosecuted for his murder had they not killed themselves. It was an extraordinary case. How did you find it? Oh, unique, very unique. And it is extraordinary and a very complex case with three... Um, three people that have died in tragic circumstances and it's very sad and as I say our thoughts are with the families and friends of those individuals involved. The coroner said it had been a sad, sorry and sordid story and one that had left three people dead. Natalie Gray, Anglia News, Yarmouth Coroner's Court. The former Ipswich Town footballer Titus Bramble has been arrested on suspicion of rape. Bramble, who now plays for Sunderland, and his brother Tess Fay, who plays for Leyston in the Eastern Counties League, were held after the alleged attack at a hotel in Newcastle City Centre early this morning. A woman has been arrested on suspicion of attempted murder following a fatal collision in Lowestoft. The victim, a 30-year-old man, was hit by a car near the Norman Warrior pub just before six last night. 
He was taken to James Paget Hospital with severe internal injuries, but later died. A 25-year-old woman from Lower Stoft is being questioned by police. RNLI lifeboat crews patrolling our coastline attended fewer incidents this summer than last. Crews from Norfolk, Suffolk and Essex attended 297 incidents ranging from rescuing people cut off by the tide to stricken canoeists and boats. Last year they responded to 385 incidents. That's a fall of more than 20%. The campaign for real ale has been trumpeting the big success of small breweries. There are now nearly 80 of these so-called microbreweries in this region. That's turning out ales to quench the growing thirst for traditional beers. Alba Patel has this report. There's a boom in the brewing business and small companies like Milton Brewery near Cambridge are powering that growth. East Anglia is one of the heartlands of British brewing and we're doing well in this region. We've been going for 11 years. We started off very small. We've grown considerably. Uh, in the last year, we've grown 20-odd percent. We've got our first Cambridge pub. New research by the Campaign for Real Ale found small breweries are overcoming barriers like tax rises on beer and supermarket competition. They've got the proper hops yeah. and malt and yeast in them, you know, whereas the mass the big brewers use hop oil it's all hop oil and yeast extract and it's uh, it's i'm not the same you know the more we support the smaller breweries the better the better they are the, the more you know the more chance they've got of staying norfolk is absolutely awash with microbreweries suffolk is also replete with them over here in the west of the region we're not quite as well off although there are more and more coming along all the time and yeah, it almost seems like there's one opening every week sometimes, which is fantastic. Real ale pubs also seem to be flourishing. 88 in the East feature in the latest Good Beer Guide. The Dove in Bury St Edmunds was named the best in the region. I think also that's important also is the landlord, landlady and the staff that they actually know with regard to sort of real ales, which is this type of pub, exactly what they can recommend to the customer. And although real ale is seen as the preserve of men, women and younger people are also opting for the brew, meaning the industry may well buck the economic downturn. Alpa Patel, Anglia News. Right, let's see some football now. And uh, Ipswich Town are through to the fourth round of the Carling Cup. They continued their impressive early season form last night, winning 2-1 at Millwall. Tamis Priskin and Gareth McCauley were Ipswich Town scorers there. Some transfer news. Norwich City midfielder Matthew Gill looks set to rejoin former club Peterborough United on a month's loan. The 29-year-old watched last night's game with Swansea. Gill's found opportunities hard to come by at City, but if the deal is agreed, he could start for Posh in Saturday's League One clash with MK Dons. And players from Swarsden Cricket Club in Norfolk set off for Southampton this morning to prepare for the final of the Coxburg Club 2020 Cup. They play Wimbledon Cricket Club at the Rose Bowl tomorrow and are preparing by watching England play Pakistan in the final one-day international of the summer.